Hey guys, this is Nadia from Ibani Crafts and today I want to show you how to make a soldered pear basket setting. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because I upload new stuff on a regular basis. I quite often make kits and PDF tutorials for the videos I put up on here and I'll pop a link in the description below. Um, I also have all sorts of gemstones, square and half round wire, some beads and all sorts of other goodies on my website. So take a gander over and see if there's anything you fancy. Last but not least, come and join us in our uh, wire wrappers and metal smiths group on Facebook. I'll also pop a link below. Right, let's get started. So here I've got some square wire which i've put through my rolling mill um, and the idea is to rest the stone on that band so that actually when you put the stone on there that it doesn't poke out the bottom if you can see that so cut our piece and now we need to shape it into a pair so obviously you anneal that first and then you shape it and you want to make sure that it's just big enough so that it holds the stone and you just kind of double check it actually fits you don't want to make it too big try and get it the right size straight off you can always adjust a little bit later I think I need to make it a little bit longer on that side. So you just create the shape to fit the pair in it. And then later on, we're going to file the tip so that we can solder this close. So it was already at an angle there. We're going to be doing the same once the, um, the frame fits. <clears throat> so I've got it shaped. And you could use a jeweler's saw to cut this off. But I just find it easier to trim it off with. Cut cutters that's much quicker and then you can actually shape the design so I'm just going to open this up a little bit so that my file fits in just ever so gently there we go so now I'm going to use a jeweler's file to create a chamfer or an angle rather So that they can fit together so just moving this in one direction to create this sort of edge we want them to line up so i'm going to be doing that okay so i have now annealed it again and i've um filed the edges so now we're going to close it off as much as we can so and if need be you can place it actually on a steel block and then just hammer it closed so putting it on here you might need to have a good grip on it very gently hammer it and that will help me to close it up so next step is the soldering right so I've prepped it and closed it and I've placed a bit of um, hard solder underneath the joint and I'm going to put some more flux on it with my flux brush and then I've soldered it so now what I'd like to do is create like a, a shallow seat for the stone to sit in because it's still sticking out a little bit so 
can see that when I place the stone in the basket, it still kind of sticks out. So I'd like to create a little seat. The way to do this, I've got my diamond tip um, drill bits and uh, my rotary tool. And all I'm doing here is just shaving the edges of that. I'm just going to go all the way around until I have created a shallow seat. Okay, so I've got the seat and I'm also going to polish the outside. It's always easier to polish um, before you put on all the prongs because obviously the area is hard to reach. So again, I'm using my diamond tip and I'm just, that gets rid of all the, the burrs and the uneven bits. So just kind of move the tool around and that cleans it all up nicely. So just get it ready and polish it up before we're going to solve down the prongs. So here I'm using my sanding wheel. I really find it is fantastic for small items like that. So I'm holding on to my um call it and then i'm going to use my sanding wheel and this really gets rid of all the tool marks um and so forth so that um you can then Attach the prongs just now. Okay, so once you're happy with the um, the overall shape and the polishing, we're going to mark out the area where we're going to put the post. So obviously, I'm going to put one right at the tip, so you don't really need to mark that one off. But anyway, and then obviously you want to make sure when you're marking out the sides um, that they are symmetrical. So probably going to go somewhere here, right in the sort of corner around and then we're going to do the same on the other side maybe come up a little bit and on the side i think it's a bit skew i can't really see what i'm doing here because i'm bending over halfway so anyway you get the idea so you make sure that they are marked out nice and straight um, and then the next step is to uh, drill the holes for the actual posts that are going to go in there um, and we're going to be doing that with some burrs okay so now we're going to create the holes for the posts um, and because if you put a stone on there you can see that there really isn't much space so you don't want the posts at the top to dig in too much into the um, the collared. So what we're going to do is I've got a burr here and this is a 1.3 millimeter burr which is about the same size as um, the hole is going to be for the post and we're going to create an angled hole. So what we're going to do is come in at the side and we are going to create the hole from the bottom up so that it comes up at an angle so whatever comes out at the top there will be enough space so basically the post will sit at an angle like that so this is the final bill we're going to use but i'm going to start up with a smaller one just to get the groove going right so i've gotten a smaller burr and i've got some cut lube or burr life depends whatever it's called where you buy yours from just a little bit will do and normally you would do this support it um, you'd have something that will help you to keep it um, steady but I want to try and show you what I'm doing here so so the way I'm going to do this is just to make sure I've zoomed in so I'm going to start at an angle you don't need to go fast to get a groove going, try not to slip. Okay. 
So that's the groove start. Obviously, try not to slip, otherwise you're going to um, scratch as a new nicely polished um, collet. So I'm just going to cut some more. And the slower you go, you don't really need to go fast with these. They cut really nicely. You tend to blunt them if you go too fast. Um, so just be go slowly. Oh, let me see. Don't do that. So just try go slow. And remember to go in at an angle. So once we've done that, we can then come in with a bigger burr uh, and make the hole a little bit larger. So I'm going to be doing that the same on the other side. I think I've removed the marker now with my hands. So normally, you, you know, so to avoid that, you make a mark with, uh, with the one on the one side and then you start cutting on the other because now I have to go back and, and draw it perfectly symmetrical again on the other side, which is a bit of a pain. So I've got a piece of square wire and we're going to be creating the front for the pair setting. It's roughly about 1.6. not sure why it's 1.6 because I put it as 1.5. So, I'm going to rest it. What I'm going to do is just take the tip off, choose a side, and I keep it purposefully longer so that I've got something to hold on to at the moment. And I'm flattening this out so that I can have a flat surface to cut a groove into it. So I've got it all filed down so that it's like a triangle. So now what we need to do is create like a cut so that we can create a right angle for the triangle to sit flush against the tip of the pear. So I've got a flame bow. I'm going to add this is just to make the initial cut. I've got a little bit of cut lube or bur life I think depends where you are what it's called so I'm trying to actually reach here so that I can actually see what I'm doing uh, there we go. so I'm just very gently you need to go very slowly you don't need to go too fast we're just starting a cut in the middle and then gradually widen it out and obviously try and create like a right angle so that will create the initial shape and then obviously use any other burrs you have available to create um, a sort of rectangle on the inside um, I've got various different diamond tips that I'm going to use as well. So whatever you have available to create. So um, and try and make the bottom thinner than the tips. So obviously um, make it a little bit thicker towards the top so that you've got something left to go over the stone. So and quite fine towards the bottom. But you'll see once I've finished um, um, cutting out the the wire. All right, so that's what it looks like. So you want the angle to fit really flush to the tip of your pair. So make it much narrower at the bottom than at the top. Next up, we're going to cut the post. Right, so next up, we're going to solder the post and I'm going to use, you can still use hard without flowing the first solder, but um, it's better to use medium um, if you're more comfortable with that as that will have a lower um, melting temperature than the hard, so it won't risk to melt your first joint. Out. So that's what it looks like so far. So next we're going to clean it up and then put the other posts on. Okay, so I'm fluxing. Oops. 
So I just want to make sure that the posts are in contact with the the college just to make sure that the solder flows because solder won't bridge a gap um it will only hold two components together so if you have a bit of a gap it's not really as stable <clears throat> and secure as if as when the um the two components sit together so i'm just trying to push them together as much as i can Right, so I've made a coil using some 0 0.8 20 gauge wire and we are going to be soldering this to our, our setting. So we need to make sure that the edges are filed down nice and flush so that um, the solder can flow nicely. So use a jeweler's file um, or whatever else you have available to make sure the edges are flush with the setting. So you want to place the jump ring sort of halfway um, in the design so that when the pair hangs it's nicely balanced so you need to make sure that it's kind of in the middle between top and bottom. So next test the stone for fit and we're going to be marking the wires and the posts um, to make sure that we have the exact position where we need to cut um, a groove so that the wires can bend over the stone. So I'm using a cookie pen and I'm just on the sides marking with my pen where I'm going to cut the grooves like so on that side as well and uh, the, the groove that we're going to be cutting in the wire will enable uh, the post to bend over the stone without uh, cracking um, and keeping it in place So next up we're cutting the groove and I have got a heart burr which kind of cuts uh, at an angle. I'm using my cut lube again um, and I'm going to go where the marks are and I'm going to cut a groove. So this is almost like a wedge. If you imagine a tree being cut um, in a wedge shape, this is exactly the same sort of principle and you're just cutting a groove where you've put your marks in as, that as where the stone is going to be sitting and we're going to be folding these wires over the stone at a later stage. And again slow speed is really quite important. You really don't need to go fast. When I first started out I used to go at supersonic speed and I was wondering why all of my burrs would uh, blunt, would get blunt. So um, the slower you go, the longer your burrs will last and uh, the cut actually works much better. So do the same to all of the posts and then the next step is to fit the stone. So stone fits and we're going to now close the prongs over stone. Very satisfying process that is. So I've got a prong setting tool but you can just use a normal pair of pliers and we're going to bend this. Obviously take really take your time bending it over, you don't want to crack your stone. Um, and only a little bit is enough and that's great. So I'm trimming off the uh, the top of the post once you're happy with the fit uh, as we're going to be filing down <clears throat> the, the rest of them. So I'm just cutting off a bit of material off the top. Obviously use a um, heavy duty flash cutter for your bigger wire. Uh, next we're going to take the top off and I'm going to shape the prongs and this is also a matter of preference you can make them pointed or rounded and um, whichever you want um, it's personal preference so I kind of like a soft sort of curve so I'm shaping these using my jewelers files you can also use your diamond tips whatever you have handy and um, just remember obviously you want it nice and polished so you need to make sure that the finish is nice and smooth so whatever whatever file you start with end up with a um quite a fine grit so that you get a nice polish at the end so that's what it looks like and i'm um, going to obviously find it done some more but i'm quite happy with that okay so all polished up and I've put a jump ring on the end so you can normally just put a bigger jump ring there and attach a chain to it I tend to buy these, I'm quite lazy, so I don't make these, so I buy these, and these are sort of pinch bells um, that I buy online. Um, we get various different types, um, and all I do with them is bring them in, and I hook 
them in to the jump ring obviously make it big enough and I cut off one end Let's see if I can zoom in I cut in cut off the one end and I pinch it shut um, and then I solder these pieces together so that it doesn't obviously come off if you just pinch it like that eventually it'll just fall out so that doesn't work and um, so you need to solder them um, so you can use um, it's called thermo I'm not really sure it's called something thermal um, hang on right found it thermo gel so you can use that um, to put it over the joint so it doesn't melt you know obviously put you know solder this I should have soldered this before I put the stone in um, so you, you put that on before the stone is in and then you solder that shut and that way you can then have a bale that is attached to it without coming apart obviously you get other kinds of bales that don't need to be soldered so, so just have a look in, online and as I said also you can just use a jump ring as well um, and that's that so hopefully you find this useful and uh, thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe because as I said I upload new stuff on a regular basis if you do want to share what you've made if you're going to use the tutorial feel free to come and join us in our artist group on Facebook it's called wire wrappers and metal smiths worldwide um, I also make kits as I said earlier um, I have gemstones and all sorts of uh, different tutorials as well on my website so I will pop a link below and last but not least if you fancy to um, see what I get up to on my social media see little videos that I make for the creations and tutorials that I make you can visit me on TikTok, Facebook um, and Instagram they're all under in Bali Crafts um, that's the handle and that's it for me thank you so much and see you next time